In this video, I will talk about u functs and aggregation with pandas. So what are both of these? Well, aggregations are functions where one or more dimensions is collapsed onto a single value. So if I take, for example, the max of a series, this will turn a one-dimensional series into a scalar, which is basically zero-dimensional. And in um, pandas, stat operations like max or something generally exclude missing data, which is a really useful property of pandas if you're working with data sets. Okay, um, let's look at aggregations. Um, first of all, well, for series, it's really easy. Let's create a series, and if I simply call it series.sum, this is an aggregation. One-dimensional series, zero-dimensional sum. And just as well, I can call mean, median, etc. And for data frames, I can do that as well. And if I simply call the mean, then it will, um, for every column, calculate the mean, such that I get a series. So from a two-dimensional data frame, I get a one-dimensional series containing the mean of the respective columns. I can specify the, the axis, and axis equals zero means columns here again, so I have the, um, means rows actually again, so the mean over the rows, just the same as explicitly saying axis equals rows, but I can also specify that I want the mean um, for the columns, and then I have the mean, well, I mean both of the columns respectively. And these here are all the pandas aggregations which exist Okay, next aggregations are sort of u-funds. U-funds are vectorized functions that change all values of an array simultaneously. They don't collapse dimensions, so the result is going to be, it's going to look like the original one did. And in pandas, it's basically the same as in NumPy, but for unary operations, the u-funds will preserve the index and column labels, and for binary operations, they will, actually, they will even align the indices when passing the objects to u-funk. So if I add two data frames, pandas will make sure that it adds the respective column values of the same columns by aligning the indices. And that's a really nice feature and really takes a bulk of the work when like a bulk of the complicatedness when I try to add different stuff where I don't know how to align the indices. That a lot of work in a potential error prone task and it's really foolproof with pandas. So let's look at this. I have this data frame and if I simply call numpy.exponent of this data frame well, this works like a charm. So um, I can call the numpy function with the data frames argument and it will preserve the indices. All right, and now how does this index alignment look for especially for binary operations? Um, well, it does align the indices in the process. So let's look at this. So this is useful when working with incomplete data. So if we have, for example, in our area dictionary, uh, series, I mean, we have Alaska, Texas, and California, and in a population uh, series, I have, I don't have Alaska, but instead I have New York. Um, and like I said, you can do set operations on indices, and I see that where the index which both have in common, the union, the set union of the indices, is Texas and California. So if I divide area by population, for example, to get the um, population density, I would expect to have a meaningful value for those and a non meaningful value for the others, basically a missing value. And as a matter of fact, I do that. So Alaska and New York don't have a meaningful value, so there's something missing. And this is what pandas is nice. So uh, incomplete, incomplete data is basically forwarded throughout the results of my calculations on the data frames. However, sometimes I want to use, for example, a fill value where I have missing data. And I can do that. So I can provide the fill value as argument. However, if I use the um, division using this operator, I cannot because how do I give keyword arguments with like the fill value here. So instead I have to know that in pandas there exists the divide function or the add function or whatever you want. And this function is, again, this here is basically syntactic sugar for this, just this is not a dundle method this time. But um, if I call area.divide population, it's basically the same thing as here, but I can provide the keyword argument fill value. Now this will fill missing values with zero. This, however, leads to Alaska being infinity because I'm dividing an existing value by zero, which leads to infinity. And for New York, it's zero because I'm dividing zero by an existing value, which is zero. So um, to make sure that I know that this actually well, is a missing um, value, um, to show that this is a missing value, I have to replace infinity and negative infinity by not a number and then drop the numbers such that now I have only meaningful population densities. 
New York's not that meaningful, but whatever. Okay, and how does the index alignment work for um, data frames instead of series? So imagine I have this data frame which has two columns and two rows, and I have this one which has three columns and three rows, and I see no correspondence from uh, where the C column and the two row are not existing in A. So if I add A plus B, this is supposed to be all missing values, and yes, they are. And again, just uh, like for the division, if I call the explicit dot add function, I can provide a fill value. And if that's zero, then it's only the one value. Here. So let me tell you how useful these functions actually are. So just about every Pandas beginner I've ever worked with, including myself, has at some point attempted to apply a custom function by looping over the data for rows on it, rows one at a time. This is possible, yes. And it's consistent with the way you would normally interact with other iterable Python objects, um, like you would loop through a list. However, this is incredibly slow, and in Pandas, the slowest way to get anything done. This doesn't take advantage of um, all the Pandas operations. So, crude looping in Pandas doesn't take advantage of built-in operations, making it extremely inefficient and actually less readable because simply calling A plus B is more readable than looping over all elements of A and looping over all elements of B. Um, so please use the U functions when they are available. If they are not, you could not use U functions and you could go for, um, for row in A print row. Is this possible? Yeah, but it will loop over, um, let's loop over B, and we'll loop over the rows. So what we would have to do, for example, is we would, well, we could transpose it, and ah, this is all shitty. Um, instead, let's go, what we can do is we can go over the eta rows, eta rows. And now we're getting um, the actual rows. So actually, we're getting, uh, I think we're getting two things by the eta rows. First, the index, and second, the row. So now, um, now we see that we can loop over, where is A, this is B. So we can loop over the lines or the rows getting um, the individual rows as series. This is possible, but this is not slow. We could also loop over B, but I forgot right now. I don't want to know because I don't ever want to use this because it's not how we're supposed to use pandas. And I also don't want to show this to you. Okay, um, index alignment, more index alignment. Let's look at this data frame and let's add a new column to this data frame. So how do we do this? Well, let's create simply some kind of series which has zero for all its values. Um, df.index is nine elements long even though we have we only have the uh, odd numbers here. And let's assign, using our sign operator here, um, the column new, so we've, I've already told this before, the assign method, I mean. Let's assign a new column called new, and let's make this TMP. Okay, and we see now that, um, well, if I do it like this, then I fill these values here. So the odd values I do fill, yes, but, and I don't fill the ones where I didn't have anything, yes, but I lose all the even values of my TMP here. And maybe I don't want this. So what I can do is I can align uh, my data frame and TMP on exits equals zero. And this now will align the indices. So it will give me a superset of the indices. So it will simply give me the um, set um, union of the index of TMP and data frame. So df.index union tmp.index. This contains the even numbers where they exist. So until eight and from nine on only the odd numbers until 19. So where they exist in my TMP, the even numbers. So now I have out aligned here. So this is the aligned version of my old one. So df.align gives me the aligned version of my data set when trying to align the indices with the second data set. And it returns me two values because it also does that for my um, second data set. And now I can use, I could basically, um, well, 
could go for um, old aligned uh, dot assign new equals new aligned and this will have all the values including the even ones for the lower numbers here which I didn't have before uh, and just as well I could simply create um, my series with the index of the original one if that was what I wanted and assign them like this and this one would look like this. However, this has obviously a different effect than what I did here. Stop egg and apply. So egg is the explicit version for aggregation function. So if we want to apply more than one operation, either ufunc or aggregation, we use egg. So let me create um, a data frame here. And now I want to aggregate. And now I can provide the egg function a list with either strings or functions in there. So I can, for example, so these strings are going to be evaluated, so evaluated and made a function of this. So if I call df.aggregate with sum and mean, I will create a new data frame that aggregates. So it takes one dimension from this one, but as I have two aggregation functions, I still have um, two rows here. So I aggregate from all of these columns, I boil them down to the sum and to the mean. And I can also, if I uh, provide the egg function a dictionary, I can use different aggregations for different columns. So for the column A, I want the sum and the mean, and for the column B, I want the mean and the max, which is what, which then results in these three rows where, well, I don't provide the max for A and I don't provide the sum for B, because these are not a number. And um, this here is, as we see, they uh, reduce the number of dimensions so these are aggregations it also works for u functions for example we can use the exponent and like i said i don't have to provide strings i can also provide for example the numpy.exp function which is then going to be applied on all of these values all right and then there's also the apply function and the apply function is basically the generalization of u functions for normal functions so we've already seen the u functions like compsum or exp um, but apply can be used to run an arbitrary function on all elements of a series of data frame. Note, however, that this then is not as efficient as the new function because this will still basically roll over the entire data frame or series and simply apply this function on all of the values. This is still more elegant and still a bit faster than looping, but not that fast. I'm going to get to that in a minute. So let's create this data frame. And then Let's call the cumsum function. So this accumulates all these numbers, accumulated sum. Um, but just as well, well, this method exists on data frames. But if it didn't exist, I could simply data frame dot apply numpy dot cumsum, and this runs the numpy dot cumsum function on the columns. So the argument which this function is getting is always a column. So um, first of all, well, I can, for example, so do uh, so this results if i take the um, column model of this this will yield a series and i can um well, make the series a column either that way or that way but yeah so and in this apply i don't have to provide existing functions but i can also create my own functions for example lambda functions and using lambda functions we can combine apply with arbitrary function but like i said the arguments are always the entire column. So to demonstrate that, I created this lambda function, which doesn't return anything, but only prints. So I just printing here what the argument of the function is to show you what the argument of the lambda fun of the function you put into apply is, and it's always the entire column. So we see it gives it prints the entire series A, the entire series B, series A comes sum and B comes sum. Okay. And when this lambda function, which returns none for all the columns, is applied, well, this returns a series where all of the results here are none. Okay. Um, so, for example, um, if I put the lambda function which takes x, so which takes a value and adds one to it, this only works because this here is again a vectorized function. Because if I call series plus one, what pandas will do, it will add one to all elements of series. So I can apply this function here because this x plus one works on series as well okay and if i want more complex stuff where i don't where i don't know any u functions um, or functions that work on the entire 
series, then I can, for example, do it like this. So this function loops over, so this takes the argument explicitly as a series, loops over the series, and then, for example, what I'm doing here is where I'm creating a new list where if the element is bigger than 16, I'm returning the element, otherwise I'm returning the negative. And I'm also printing it to be vomit is what I'm doing. Now, if I apply this function, well, this is the, um, where the element it runs through, and then returns, as we see, um, negative 16, uh, so negative all the numbers that are, that are lower than 16, and positive for all the numbers that are higher. So, yeah. For example, I could also calculate the range of um, a series. Um, apply works for both series and data frames. So this here runs on a series, right? Because the column of a data frame is series. And um, it also runs on a complete data frame. Okay, um, more things I can do with it. I can, for example, give a dictionary. So in Pokemon, um, every Pokemon has at least a type and depending on the type, it has a certain Z move. And if I, if I have this dictionary of Z-moves, I can basically map the type to a Z-move. And how do I do this? Well, I create, I simply apply lambda x Z-moves at the position x. So this will look at every, so this is, it's apparently possible to provide a series as argument to a list and uh, to a dictionary. And if you do this, or as key to a dictionary, and if you do this, it will result in a series of the respective values. Because this, as so we see, this works. So this takes, um, right, for every single element, it takes, um, it puts the type as key in here, and then the value of the respective dictionary is going to be the Z-move here. And this works as well. And also a nice thing using apply, we can convert a list of series into a data frame by making the individual columns to series, because we know a data frame is simply a series of series. So now this is a series of lists, and if we now, so we know that if we call the series constructor with the list as argument, this will yield a series. So if we apply the series construct constructor to all of the elements of this series, which are lists, well, what we're going to get is a series of series, aka a data frame. It's really nice. Okay, and then I have a note on speed, and I recommend you to go to this link. We tested the time it takes if you loop with Python and if you loop with data frame eta rows and then using apply and u funks. And eta rows is a lot faster than looping over Python is eight times faster. Apply is again twice as fast as eta rows because it's, still, it's again more efficient how it's looping, but it's still looping. So it's still applying the function to every single element and that's still not good. So if you instead use u funks, which you can often because there are many u funks, this would be for example, a 50 times 50 fold increment, and this is quite a lot. So use apply only if um, speed is no concern for you, and if it is, try to um, use UFUNX instead, and this is the link for that. All right, and then I have an exercise for you, and convert this series of series into one series. So we know how to convert it into a dictionary, and then you should flatten it. And hint, uh, you don't need the apply anymore, any more than here, but then you can stack or unstack the respective series. Or data frame to a series. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, so um, let's look at, well, first of all, let's try what we did before here. Let's look at s.applypd.series. And now, what have I told you earlier? Well, there's the stack function, which makes from a, from a data frame a series again. So now we have a series which is multi indexed. But yes, but we can simply reset the index of this, right? Reset index. And now, yes, we have, well, this here again, this weird thing. And now we could only take, um, I don't know if it's, oh, oops. I don't know if it's uh, zero. No, nope, it's, I don't know what the column was named when it was, when it was written as a string here. Yeah, I can do it like this. Um, but the nicer way is to give the argument, the keyword arguments drop equals true. This drops the indices as well. All right. And then next thing will be grouped by the last thing. 